Hey, welcome to this uh, shortwave radio channel. And um, when I do a lot of radio listening, of course, one of the things a lot of you have noticed, I always have the uh, map on the screen here. Um, typically, because I like to see where it's day, night, nighttime, where's the, uh, we talked about the Terminator or, you know, when we actually use the gray line, which is that separation where it's day and night. And there's enhanced propagation there. And, uh, of course, it's very useful. And, you know, I have the Yesu here and all of that. So it's kind of a nice little uh, setup. And notice how the lines are kind of very straight. You might have noticed that at certain times when I've made videos or I, I was doing a live show and I showed the map, they were very curved. Uh, like, you know, at the top here, there, there was more of a curve. Uh, now it's like two straight lines or almost two straight lines. And this is has to do with the fact that we're changing season, but mostly during the equinox. So the month of March and the month of September, you'll have two straight lines, uh, which are pretty much exactly the same. Uh, this is an interesting time in propagation. Uh, I had a comment the other day. It was like, well, how come, you know, I've, I've listened all winter. I've heard all sorts of things, but I have the impression there's more Chinese broadcasts coming into North America at uh, at this time is is it normal and yes it is and it has to do with that famous gray line that's because when the darkness path starts crossing north america well on the other side here the dark the, the day night path starts crossing asia so we are having enhanced propagation through the gray line because it actually is at the same time over China and Asia uh, and North America. So we have enhanced signals from Asia during this period of time for that reason. Um, there's also all sorts of things I was noticing on propagation on the amateur bands, particularly the fact that there's still a lot of daytime, even when we are past a couple of hours um, and, and many hours too. Um, I've noticed that we have a lot of, of contacts possible with with Japan and China and even Australia New Zealand um, very late at night and you know it shows with Radio New Zealand 17675 which is uh, coming in stronger and stronger every night but having an indication like that um, you know this once again is called Simon's world map it's a software for Windows um, you can have an equivalent online there's the uh, uh, day night um, website that has a, uh, a time and date website is uh, the name uh, that has a day night map that's pretty much live on a web browser. Uh, there are some apps. There's one on my uh, win my Android tablet. I found a world map with the day night uh, pattern on it that I could use on my uh, Android tablet. So uh, it's it's a good thing to see where it's day, where it's night, not just for the gray line capabilities. But also for the fact that what frequency would be better for a certain area. So, you know, when darkness falls over east coast of North America, it's dark over the Atlantic and uh, Europe, Africa. You know that stations with lower frequencies will actually come in better from that area. But at the same time, all that comes from the west coast or the Pacific area is all in the daylight. So you'll have signals from that uh, area, but from higher frequencies because it's daytime. But it's uh, always a good indication. It's fun to have these uh, tools um, to to check it out. I mean, you know, imagine back in the, when I started in the 80s, there was pretty much nothing like that. There there, there were some things that were starting to show up like on, on Commodore computers, I remember. But overall, uh, we didn't have much of anything of, of tools like that, which are just great because they help us, um, you know, see, have a visual of, of where in the world uh, a signal comes from and, and the day-night patterns around it. And, of course, as this progresses, we'll see that now the shape will change in the next few weeks into something else because we're going to go slowly into summer. Uh, and um, this is, you know, change in propagation, plus add the change in frequencies that's going to happen at the end of the month. You know, make some interesting programming uh, stuff that, that you can listen to. So uh, lots of 
interesting signals if you not only you know now ha know where and when to chase them, but also um, with the day night patterns that you can follow, uh, you have a better indication if you know such and such signal is possible. Uh, one of the things I was looking at the uh, Asian um, Asiatic Russia number stations that were coming in. I mean, this is incredible. It uh, once again, gray line partly helps, uh, and the fact that you know it's the higher solar activity and it's daylight across the Pacific area. Uh, and remember also that there's another factor that we're going to talk about uh, in the next video, and that one is the polar propagation and an interesting fact about polar propagation. So, uh, but just shows how uh, when conditions are right, you can hear so many, so many signals. Uh, even, you know, sometimes you might want to think about a signal and say, I don't think it's going to work. I don't think that frequency is going to propagate where I am. So, you know, why should I try it? It's probably not going to be. Well, I say it all the time. Even in the impossible task of, nah, it's not going to work, try it. Um, even I, as a 40-plus year listener with a lot of knowledge, a lot of info about propagation and, and knowing when and how to listen to things, I get surprised regularly at, wow, I never thought I'd hear this. So that's why I always say, look, even if it sounds crazy, even if it sounds impossible, you know what? Punch in that frequency and go check it out. Uh, you have no idea how sometimes the surprise that you'll get. Uh, and, you know, we often have that surprise coming from the fact that maybe you've tried a signal dozens of times and it never was there. Well, that time that it's going to be there, you're going to be happy to be testing out and trying it out all the time. And once again, by using such tools as, you know, um, maps with the uh, day-night patterns where with countries in the daylight at a certain time when you're listening to um, shortwave radio uh, will help you determine if also maybe there's a possibility. But don't just think you know it all. I, there's too many uh, people out there. I know a lot of hams like to, I'm a ham. I know. I know. No, it doesn't work like that. And actually so many hams are totally wrong and so many things that they think are are right that you have to you have to get that out of your head and out of the barriers that maybe you've set yourself into I don't do this I don't do that I don't program that and I'm not going to listen to that frequency at that time it's never possible uh, a great example of that is it's nighttime in North America it's one in the morning would you have the immediate um, idea of, oh, I'm going to go tune the 10 meter band. Well, in the common sense of day night patterns and nighttime low frequencies, you would probably tell yourself, well, why should I? There's nothing there. It's night. It's middle of the night. I'm not going to hear something on 10 meters. Well, wrong. There's other phenomena. One of them, particularly coming towards the summer, sporadic e -skip, which are patches of ionized um, you know particles in the ionosphere that that show up often it seems often to be related to you know weather patterns and and like lines of thunderstorms well you know what that can give you 10 meter propagation at midnight at two in the morning I've seen 10 meter band in some days open all night because Spartic e -skip was so intense. And so that's why I always say, even if you think it's not going to work, um, try it. It's really the, the thing that will keep radio alive also for you because someday you'll hear something and you'll be, wow, I never thought I would hear it on that frequency at this time, but it's there. And like I said, use tools like these maps and 
and uh, have fun with radio. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.